In this mini tutorial, what I want to do is to go through some of the important aspects of the cranial base with you, with particular relevance to the foramina for the cranial nerves. And the first thing that we really need to get a grip on is the presence of three cranial fossa, three cavities within the skull base, um, which give us three basic regions. The first cavity here, bounded by the sphenoid and frontal bones, is the anterior cranial fossa. Then here is the middle cranial fossa. And at the back is the posterior cranial fossa. Now, it's important to realise um, about the cranial fossa that they are actually arranged in a stepwise fashion. And in order for us to appreciate this, we should rotate the skull and just put a probe into the three cranial fossa in order to see how deep they are. So here we can see that the anterior cranial fossa is the most shallow, followed by the middle fossa, and then the posterior cranial fossa is the deepest of them all. So the three cranial fossa are arranged three-dimensionally. So now let's take a closer look at the anterior cranial fossa. Now, as we said, the anterior cranial fossa is the shallowest, um, and its major feature of importance is in this region here. What we have got here is a structure known as the Christa Galli. So let's just write that down. The Christa Galli. And Christa Galli translates as coxcomb. Okay, it translates as coxcomb because it looks a bit like one of those things um, on, on, on a chicken. And the Christa Galli is an important point of attachment for the meninges, specifically the cranial dura, the tough membrane within the skull. So the Christa Galli. Um, has at either side of it um, a series of holes of foramina um, which unfortunately we can't see very well on this plastic skull but the foramina are, are in this region here and these are the these make up the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone through which the olfactory nerves pass and on our diagram on the right we can see those there in yellow so the Christogalli surrounded by the holes in the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. Now moving to the middle cranial fossa, um, and we can see we've got a lot of foramina in the middle cranial fossa. Remember, it's kind of shaped like this, almost like a, a butterfly. And it gets that shape from the presence of the sphenoid bone. And an important foramen we can see here and here is the optic canal. So there are the optic canals and just beneath those are the two superior orbital fissures which are invisible in a view like we have on the right hand side. You can't see them because of the view. Furthermore what we have sitting just beneath the superior orbital fissures are the, is the foramen rotundum there on each side, foramen ovale and foramen spinosum. So they're arranged in a crescent-like shape in the middle cranial fossa and they're mostly related to nerves which control the eyes and branches of the trigeminal nerve. Also note the pituitary fossa here which is where the pituitary gland sits and the foramen spinosum and its associated groove for the middle meningeal artery. So now, after we've considered the middle fossa, we're going to look at the posterior fossa. A few important structures for you to be aware of here. This bony rump um, is known as the clivus, and that's an important word that we should write down. The clivus, the clivus, um, and that relates to this um, ramp of bone in the posterior cranial fossa and the clivus is very very important 
um, because it's the bone upon which the brain stem sits. So there is the clivus, and we've got a very nice view of our various structures in the posterior fossa. The big foramen magnum there in the centre for the spinal cord, and we can see the big hollows where the cerebellar hemispheres sit. Furthermore, sitting in the petrous part of the temporal bone, the thick part of the temporal bone, are the internal acoustic meati, the internal acoustic meatus through which the vestibular cochlear nerves pass, and these large jugular foramina, which contain um, venous channels and the 9th, 10th and 11th cranial nerves. Finally, just coming off of foramen magnum, we have the hypoglossal canals, which are where the hypoglossal nerve passes through. So now that we've gained a bit of an appreciation for the three-dimensional layout of the foramina of the skull, um, let's just focus in on this diagram um, and, and consolidate what we've learned. So, the first set of foramina that we need to be aware of lie within the anterior cranial fossa, and this is known as the cribriform plate. Cribriform plate. And it is through the cribriform plate that our olfactory nerves pass. So through the cribriform plate that the first cranial nerve passes. The second foramen that we need to be aware of is in the middle cranial fossa, which we can see here. And this is known as the optic canal. And that's where the optic nerve passes. The third foramen we need to be aware of is very difficult to see in this view, but you saw it earlier on when we tilted the skull a little, and that is the superior orbital fissure. And the superior orbital fissure basically contains most of the structures related to the eye apart from the optic nerve. So the superior orbital fissure contains the third nerve, the fourth nerve, so the ocular motor, the trochlea, the fourth nerve, the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. Um, it also contains the sixth nerve. So the superior orbital fissure contains all of the nerves relevant to the eye apart from the optic nerve. Next comes the foramen rotundum. So this is foramen rotundum. And foramen rotundum contains the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. 5b. Next comes foramen ovale. Foramen ovale. And ovale is, is quite a large foramen actually and it contains the important mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. It's not a cranial nerve but we need to be aware of it um, and we're just going to point to the other side. The next most lateral foramen from foramen rotundum um, is known as foramen spinosum. And foramen spinosum is clinically very important because this contains the middle meningeal artery. The middle meningeal artery, which is um, a very important vessel supplying the meninges which can get damaged and lead to an extradural hemorrhage. Now moving into the posterior fossa, the first important posterior fossa foramen is known as the internal acoustic meatus. 
the internal acoustic meatus contains two important nerves. It contains the facial nerve, seven, and the vestibular cochlear nerve, eight. Uh, it's actually quite a relative, it's a relatively tight foramen. Um, and what that means is you don't have to have a very big lesion, say a tumour of either of these nerves, before you get quite a significant compression. The last but one foramen that we're going to consider um, is the jugular foramen. So this here is the jugular foramen. And as well as containing um, the internal jugular vein, which is a continuation of the sigmoid sinus, the jugular foramen also contains three of the caudalmost cranial nerves. Uh, that is 9, 10, and 11. Finally, we have the hypoglossal canal. The hypoglossal canal, and as the name implies there, the hypoglossal canal contains the hypoglossal nerve, the 12th cranial nerve. So those are the major foramina through which our various cranial nerves pass. Um, let's not forget though that of course we've also got the um, foramen magnum to consider here, which remember does contain the spinal part of the accessory nerve, which has to ascend from the cervical spinal cord. So I hope this video was helpful, but what you've got to realise is that it is no substitute for personal study and each of you individually looking at a skull, ideally a real skull in the dissecting room, but a plastic skull would be okay. Look at a real skull and make sure you really get these foramina clear in your mind. Okay, thank you.